Welcome to The Future Is, a podcast where we meet the people shaping what's next in business and life. I'm your host, Laura Kelleher, Honeywell's Chief Marketing Officer. In each of these episodes, we will meet the engineers, business leaders, and Honeywell's future shapers as they uncover how today's innovation will make our world safer, smarter, and more sustainable. Warehouses and distribution centers are the powerhouses that get medicine to hospitals, groceries to the supermarket, orders to your doorstep, and so much more. Think of everything a warehouse operation is expected to deliver now and how that will multiply over the next 10 years. What will warehouses look like in the future? Imagine a facility where people and robots are working side by side, or even a warehouse that's fully autonomous. Here today to talk about what's next in supply chain, warehouse, and retail environments, and how digitalization plays a key role is George Kusoftas, President and CEO of Honeywell's Safety and Productivity Solution Business. We're really glad to have you here today, George. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Laura. It's a real pleasure to be here. Yeah. Well, let's start out by, can you tell us a little bit about, um, about your business? Sure. So the Safety and Productivity Solutions Business is a business that's trying to enable a safer, more productive, and more sustainable world. We do this through a range of solutions that serve broad industries such as retail, e-commerce, healthcare, industrial automation, and, um, and industrial production. And we do some really amazing things for our customers. For example, we're, protecti we're protecting over 500 million workers in the workforce every day through our PPE protective equipment and our gas detection devices. We're also helping to enable retailers to be more productive. We serve over 60 of the top 100 retailers in the world through our automation and mobility solution devices. In fact, our mobility solution devices are in about two and a half million users' hands every day, helping their, those users be more productive in the workforce. And lastly, our sensors are so prodigious in the marketplace. We have over 50,000 sensor solutions that are in the world today, helping healthcare solutions be more effective for patients, helping automotive and EV uh, automotive industry be more productive, and also helping the aerospace industry be safe and productive. So it's a pretty amazing business. So with all of these productivity and efficiency solutions that you deliver uh, through your business, how are you helping your customers also achieve their sustainability outcomes? That's a great question, Laura. We're doing it in a couple ways. First is the mere fact that we're helping our customers automate their facilities with our conveyance solutions and robotic offerings allows them to get the same productivity, same output with less energy consumed. On top of that, we're helping them increase the, the accuracy of package loadings onto their trucks, which allows them to consume less gas mileage uh, consumed, which will save in emissions. And then lastly, we're enabling the world to be safer with the electrification of EVs through our sensor offerings, because uh, lithium ion batteries have the inherent safety hazard around potential flammability from off-gassing and, and chemical leakage. And our sensors are being able to provide earlier detection signals that the industry needs to help them detect uh, the flammability risks and to keep customers safe uh, driving the cars. Yeah, wow. You know, and I mean, digitalization and automation is, I mean, it's truly changing the way we work. Um, when you think about digitalization, how do you define it? And what is Honeywell doing to enable digitalization, especially in you know, supply chain, retail, and warehouse um, environments? Digitalization is helping our customers allow them to make better decisions every day in terms of how they allocate their assets and their labor to be more productive. In this world today, our customers are finding that the surge of demand, and especially in the retail and e-commerce space, isn't just during the holiday season, it's every day. And the variability can be tremendous for them. So having software capabilities to work in conjunction with their assets that can give them predictive and preventive analytics around unplanned downtime in those assets, but also the unplanned variability of labor is really important to them. If I were to walk into a warehouse that was like truly advanced in its digital transformation, right? What would it look like? You know, what, what would it feel like walking in there? What would I see? And, and what are the distinguishing characteristics of that warehouse of the future? It almost seems like a choreographed symphony of things, right? <laughs> when you walk into an automated warehouse. First of all, you'll be amazed about the, the, the level of conveyance automation that actually occurs. 
Uh, you're going to have hundreds of thousands of packages going in and out of a facility on a given day, in a very large facility. Secondly, you're going to see workers enabled through mobility devices that has information for them about where they should be going next, what activities they should be executing against. And thirdly, you're going to see a symphony of robotics working in conjunction with those people and those conveyance systems, helping to move things off of trucks automatically onto conveyance systems, and also to help depalletize you know, major activities. And so it's, it's a pretty automated environment. But again, it's all backboned by software systems that provide instructions and execution um, uh, guided work for the workers. Yeah, I can only imagine the efficiency gains, right? Coming from that kind of an environment. What are some of the technologies that you're most excited about that, that Honeywell delivers? Well, one, one technology we recently developed is our, our SmartFlex uh, depalletizer robotic system. It basically takes a pallet that can be, have mixed boxes of different sizes and weights that that uh, robot can detect those different sizes and weight and efficiently offload those boxes from the pallet onto conveyance systems for, to be further pr uh, produced and sorted. And what we have found with some of our key customers that we've been able to drive over 40% productivity improvement in that, la in that activity, which also happens to be an activity that is the highest incident rate of safety incidents, right? So we're not only helping our customers save on safety for their, for their workers, but also gain productivity. I've heard the term dark warehouse yes. before. Um, what is that? Like, tell me what a dark warehouse is and what would, it, what would, it, what would the experience be like walking in and, and kind of watching that in motion? Well, essentially it's a fully automated situation with robotics aiding the movement of, of again, uh, trucks showing up with pallets that get unloaded through robotic solutions. Those pallets go on to conveyor systems through f uh, um, robotic forklifts. Then those conveyance systems will put into what's called micro-fulfillment. So imagine a, a massive grid of storage that has robots inside of it that's moving in and out to grab products and then present it for picking. And then you have robotics to do the picking to bring it down to the end, end tote and box that goes out the door. It's, a, it's truly an amazing um, environment. And we're developing solutions for every step of that journey I just described. And um, we hope that we can be an enabler for our customers for that dark warehouse uh, future. Yeah, so completely autonomous. Completely autonomous. Wow. So there are a number of companies out there, I'm sure, who are trying to figure out their automation journey. How is Honeywell equipped to help them get there? That's a great question, Laura, because you know what's interesting is we commonly talk about you know, our solutions in the context of large customers, the big retail names you would know of, um, and the big e-commerce and postal names you know of. But, but there's a large segment of customers out there, we call the middle market customers, mm -hmm. who are growing sophistication and don't really know or have the internal resources to figure this out. And that's where we can step in. We can actually offer a journey for customers who are hardly automated at all, that can use our, our voice guided instruction uh, software solutions, that can use our mobile devices and scanners, and that in and of itself can be pr productivity for them. Then as they graduate from that, they can go to what I'll call kind of midstream automation, where they might be using some of our sorter and conveyance systems, enabled by our guided work instructions, enabled by our mobile devices. And then we're when they're ready to graduate from that and get even larger and need more productivity, then they'll go on to full-on conveyance systems that includes then therefore the enhancements of robotics on the front end of receiving, and on the back end of delivery and moving you know, big boxes through depalletization robotics and moving large pallets through auto loader, unloader conveyance systems onto, the, onto the, our conveyor system. So we can actually walk the journey with our customers. We've developed kind of standard offering sets for them to walk that journey. We found that to be pretty compelling for our customers to understand so they can pick and choose where they want to be with us. Yeah, yeah, and realize value along the way as they're as they're implementing these these solutions and stages. Indeed, like we're able to show them what they can get as productivity from step one right. to each step along the journey. Yeah, and then, which which justifies the investments they need to make at each step as well. I have one more question. Okay, and if you watch or listen to our podcast, you probably know what that question is. <laughs> I ask it every time. Um, when you were a kid, yes, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, it wasn't this, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was a big sports nut growing up. Okay. And I played baseball, I played ice hockey, and I certainly had dreams of being a professional ice hockey player growing up. But that certainly came, became reality 
uh, as I became a high schooler. And um, but I, I uh, when I went to college, actually, the, here's a funny story. Uh, I went to college and I got an, an accounting degree. Mm -hmm. And the way I chose that was I had an older cousin who I looked up to as like an older brother of mine. And he showed up one day driving a Camaro. I said, that's a really cool car. What do you do? He goes, I'm an accountant. I said, I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to be an accountant. I actually paid, it actually was a smart decision for me because it helped me learn and understand the financials of companies and how to understand and ask questions and look for opportunities of gaps of information. And it actually serves me today when I, when I try to understand businesses and business decisions we're making and data we need to get those decisions, it's actually served me well. Yeah, yeah. Well, it definitely plays a big part in the value proposition, right, of all the solutions we deliver, so. Indeed. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely.